Hey you, yes you, the one behind the screen. Don't be a macaco. Better learn how to move like one. Hey, welcome back to the PS Dynamics Weekly Challenge. I would like to thank you guys very much for all your lovely comments and the support you gave on the last video. And I would like to invite you to join me for another challenge this week. And as you might have guessed, it will be a macaco. So let's just jump into it and let's get better together. Some people can learn macaco very easily and the movement comes to them almost naturally. However, it is not a very difficult movement despite the fact that some people may struggle with it. Independent of your level or physical ability, there are three things that might help you to unlock this skill. It is patience, perseverance and repetition. The tricky bit in learning macaco is identifying which part of the movement is problematic and then targeting it with some conditioning. The quickest way to learn macaco is to actually do the movement. So you need to be very consistent with your training to be able to achieve great results. Once you break down this movement, it is much easier to identify your issue. So today we're gonna go through how to start doing this movement and how to identify your issues and target them with conditioning. So let's begin with the basics. Firstly, go down on the floor in a squat position and put your hand behind you. Make a note of where and how you put your hand on the floor. Your palm has to be rotated upwards. If you do not do this, later it may affect the position of your shoulder and you actually will be blocking your movement instead of helping yourself. Another important point is how far you put the hand behind you. The further the hand is, the more power you will require to jump over your center of mass. This is a dynamic process, so keep adjusting your hand until you find the right spot for yourself to be able to easily transfer your weight over your arm. Secondly, you need to learn a good hip thrust. You need to be able to push with your legs while extending at your hip and bending your back at the same time. I would suggest to try to jump over something like so and not to worry about any other movements at the moment. Just try it. When jumping, you're gonna turn around your hand 180 degrees and you're gonna be facing the same direction you started. It may be easier to jump off something like a step, box or a bench in the beginning. Start on something low so you're not scared of falling and getting hurt. A low step would do nicely. Keep increasing the height of the step as you get more confident and don't forget it's generally a good idea to train both sides. To be able to do macaco it is also important to activate your abdominal muscles in the right time. So another good conditioning exercise might be to lay down on the box and try to pull your legs through by using only your abdominal muscles like so. While doing this exercise, please notice how your abdominal muscles work and when they need to tense in relation to the hip and back extension. Please choose the right height of the box, bench or a step so that you're comfortable when you're doing this movement and you're able to focus on your abdominal muscles. Now at this level you might be landing in a cartwheel position at the end of your movement. This is not wrong. This can be corrected later with some other movements. Additionally, you may notice that your macaco is done more through the side. Both of these issues may be corrected by learning how to throw one arm in the air, follow it with your eyes and then kick with one of the legs. And of course, all of this has to be done while pushing with your legs, extending your back and your hips. I know it might sound confusing now, but when you actually try the movement, the arm or the leg kicking might help you to get over your center of mass much easier. Try separating them at first. Focus on arm movements and then focus on the leg movements. 
As your Makaka progresses, you may wish to consider to jump over a higher equipment. However, please exercise caution throughout learning this movement. Now, since you already can do your Makaka somewhat, the focus for the intermediate group for this week will be really, really polishing and making the movement nice and clean. Another thing you're gonna attempt this week is gonna be trying to make your makaku on one hand only. In this movement, after you put your hand on the ground, you're gonna jump over it as much as you can, trying to maintain straight alignment, looking up and jumping over yourself. The main idea is try not to use the other hand, but still maintain nice makaku. The second exercise of this week for you is going to be trying the small makaku, which is also called makakinyu. In order to do this movement, you will have to use your elbow on your side when doing the makaku. So now you're not actually putting your arm on the ground and jumping over it, you're putting your arm on the ground, using your elbow to support yourself while moving over your hand. This movement is similar to what breakdancers use in their baby freeze and other freezes, and also what capoeiristas use when they do kede jeans. I'm gonna make a tutorial about how to do those later on in a couple of weeks. Also, the intermediate group will be attempting to do a bit of a twist at the end of their makaku. To be able to do this movement, you have to add a small rotation at the end of your makaku to land the opposite way of the way you were landing before. Now my pro makakos, I mean advanced group, will be doing a one-handed makaku but with straight legs. Now the most important thing in this movement is to keep your legs together and try to push as hard as you can while maintaining your body straight. Another movement for the advanced group is going to be makaku in pair. You're going to practice to do makaku from standing position just by putting your hand down and going over it. For exercise number three, you not only have to be a pro at makaku, but also a pro at handstands. During this movement, you're going to do the makaku and then stop at the top and maintain handstand as much as you can. However, if you cannot do it, don't worry, just try to stop yourself from falling. Keep practicing until you actually manage to do a handstand. Handstand. The progression of this movement will be to go into a fold after the handstand. You're gonna start with makaku, go into the handstand and then fold down. Then you throw your legs up and get back into the standing position. Don't worry, the tutorial on fold is coming in a couple of weeks. The last exercise of the bunch is a makakinyu with a twist, so actually you will have to end in a different position to the one you start. In this movement, you're gonna start with the elbow at the back and then add a small twist while you're up in the air during the makakinyu to land in kedajihins on the other side, which is also sort of a baby freeze. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're gonna try and learn something from it. And even if you cannot do a lot, just try a little couple of exercises. Please share this video with your friends, like and subscribe and follow me for more. There will be another challenge next week. Good luck and see you in the next one.